Славик Фот, Львье, Шашлык, Компот, Квас. Ха! Ха-ха-ха-ха! Е! Today, you are just a regular Slavic Boris, and we're going to eat real Slavic food, without the fancy rope. It will be delicious, comrade. Or not. <laughs> Hit the like button, and let's begin. Real Slavic food. Meat à la France. Мясо по-французски. The most popular holiday dish among the Slavs. A Soviet window to Europe. The best cuts of beef are patiently tenderized to a bed of selected baked crispy potatoes with onions and spices. The dish is topped with hard cheese and cream sauce and becomes the best casserole ever. It is only served at a big celebration and is one of the best dishes of Slavic cuisine. <laughs> Ah, oh, my back hurts. So, here's how to make French beef. Take a pork, salt it and let it dry. Cut potatoes, place it on the baking tray. Carefully and evenly add some spices, add all the onions you have at home, press down as firmly as possible, pour in the mayonnaise, all of it, put the dried meat, add mayonnaise, add the tomatoes, pineapples, 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 блять, in the mayonnaise, put some cheese on it, melt the cheese in the mayonnaise, put it in the oven for 49 hours, add more cheese, add a little more mayonnaise, and after another 57 hours, the dish is ready. French beef made of pork and mayonnaise. Mmm, curve! This creature is called French because you pour a ton of French mayonnaise on the meat. Yes, comrade. In Slavs, every dish is French. Egg. French egg. Salad. French salad. French borscht. French bread. French nothing. Beef replaces with pork and chicken. They add carrots, tomatoes, eggplant, zucchini, the cream sauce is replaced with mayonnaise, cheese is replaced with mayonnaise, the mayonnaise is replaced with mayonnaise, 10 out of 10, if you are mayonnaise. All that mayonnaise won't just come out of you if you don't mix it up with boiling water. For this purpose, this last drink tea. Chai. A warming drink brewed in a special way. It makes you a British sir, blood. To make real Soviet tea, you have to take a huge pot. It has waste or compote written on it with wall paint. The cheapest dust is poured into it and filled with water. The mixture must be boiled for several hours to make the broth as strong as possible. Then you have to mix it with water and drink it for several weeks. Slavs, especially those who honor traditions, drink tea from a flat saucer. The concentrate can be drunk just like that. Then it is called chefir, the main drink in prison. The residue left in the pot can be poured over again with water and you get another portion of tea. So from one box of tea you can brew up to three tons of drink. The main thing is to boil it long enough. It is proper to pour such tea in a glass, uh, Soviet glass, with facets. A special Soviet pride. From hot water, the glass explodes and falls on your pants, scalding your legs with dread hot shards. If the glass didn't explode, you... You dropped it because it's hot and there's no handle. <laughs> you have to take it by the edges. This glass came with detachable handles. But like everything in the SSSSR, you had to get them. For example, by stealing from the train. They are pure glass holders for foreigners. 
Although the handles were made of iron and also heat it up, so your legs had no chance of not getting scalded. You can drink tea with lemon. It's called Russian for some reason. Isn't that how anyone drinks it? No? To make the tea taste better, you can drink it with spices, such as salt. Such tea is called Mongolian tea. You can also try butter tea, Tatar tea. It is very healthy, because drinking tea with butter increases in the body the amount of water. And here you may ask, comrade, Mark, do Slavs put in their tea mayonnaise? <laughs> Да. Супер тесте. Минус 100 out of 10. The floating residue is unnecessary to eat. Котлетс. Котлеты. О, that's popular, comrade. Котлетс are even more popular among Slavs than борщ. They are eaten cold at night in the dark. They are piled high on any holiday. The authentic cutlet is made like this. We take minced meat from the basin. We drink vodka. Soak the bread in milk. Mince onion in a meat grinder. As much as possible. Grind wet bread. More. We put it in a basin. Mix it all up. You don't have to wash your hands after an hour of this jam. Drink some vodka. Put an egg. Salt it. Twist some other knob over the basin. You can spin yourself. It is considered a good thing to beat the meat. Or throw it against the wall. Or hit it against something else. It tastes better that way. We make balls. We get the oldest frying pan we have. Everything sticks to it. So we pour all the oil we have. A canister is the best. We throw the bread cutlets in flour and fry. Drink some vodka. Spend an hour talking about the SSSSSR. В армии агрессоров враги. Drink more vodka. Котлетс are ready. Bon appétit. Курр. The cutlet is a very convenient dish. After all, you'll never know what's in it. And in it, besides beef, you can put chicken, rice, leftovers from the cafeteria left by guests, cardboard, Toilet paper, an old couch standing in the yard. You can put no meat at all. You just take the onions and some onions, salt, onions, and the dish is ready. Very affordable. That's why the Soviet grandpa, remembering his youth, makes cutlets only from whole meat. So he can see the chunks. Cutlets can be eaten with buckwheat, noodles, rice, bread, but the canonical choice is puree. Pureшка. Котлетки? <laughs> С пюрешкой. It is very simple and delicious. Unless you are a slav. <laughs> we peel the potatoes, блядь. We boil them, блядь. Mash them. Put butter in it. Not much. It's a cheap dish. But it's all just regular mashed potatoes. Ha! Huh? Wait! Hop, 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 hop! See? Hop, hop! Hop, hop, hop! Now this is an authentic Soviet dish! Hop, 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 hop! This is the main secret. Western spies don't know it. The deeper you get those waves, the more mayonnaise will go into them. Hop, 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 hop! After a dinner like that, you are going to want a snack. Slavs have snacks. No, not crisps. <laughs> Boiled egg. Яичко. A Slav in general always carries an egg with him. To work, on a visit, on a trip. Peeling a boiled egg is one of the few Soviet entertainments. Peeling and eating it with mayonnaise, putting it in a salad with mayonnaise, stuffing it with mayonnaise. The second activity was to stack hard-boiled eggs with raw eggs and then try to tell them apart. 
This creature was a must have in kindergarten, at school, everywhere. And there was nowhere to hide from them. Then eggs disappeared from stores due to shortages, so the egg became a symbol of prosperity and success. You have to eat it in front of everyone and with pride. A low quality or rotten egg could be toxic, and there were no other eggs. So to keep you from kicking the bucket, eggs were simply washed in chlorine and then boiled about 147 years. This was called industrial processing and consumer use. The white would get as firm as a ball, and the yolk would turn blue. What? <laughs> it didn't save anyone from being poisoned. Ah, flashbacks! <laughs>